Hey, how's it going everybody? Uh, this is going to be another video on programming terms and in this video we're going to look at the term idempotence. Uh, so idempotence is actually a pretty easy concept to grasp uh, once you see it in action, uh, but some of the definitions can be a little confusing. Um, if you look at Wikipedia, the definition for idempotence, it says the property of certain operations in mathematics and computer science that can be applied multiple times without changing the result beyond the initial application. Um, so if you're still a little confused by that, then you'll usually see this example here. They'll say, now what this example is saying is that if you have a function f and parameters x, the result from f of x, if you pass that into the function f again, then that should equal the result of just f of x being run one time. Now if that's still a little bit unclear to you, uh, I think it'll clear it up once uh, we see an example of this in some working code. Now the code that I have here is Python code, but you know you can use any language for this. It's, it's uh, language agnostic. It's, uh, it's the same definition for any language that you use, uh, but just to uh, show you what this is, I'm using Python code here. So I have a function here called add10, and I have a parameter that I'm passing into add 10 that is num. And if we compare this to our f of x from the last slide, uh, imagine that add 10 is our f and num is our x. So now if you look down here, uh, you can see that I am printing out add 10, and I'm just going to go ahead and pass in 10 to that function. So if I run this, then you can see down here that my result is 20. But now if we remember back to the definition of uh, something that is idempotent, uh, it means that if we pass this result into the function again, then we should get the same result uh, that we got the first time. So if I take this function and I wrap it around our result here and I run it again, you can see that now we get 30. So by definition, this is not idempotent because uh, whenever we have f of 10 and we wrap that inside of f again, that result we get is 30. And whenever we just do f of 10, that result is 20. So you can see if we map this to the definition here, then this by definition is not idempotent. So let's look at an example of something that is idempotent. So I have here, let me comment this one out. So there's a built-in function in Python, ABS. It just gives you the absolute value uh, of a number. So if I run this, the absolute value of negative 10 is 10. But now if I take the absolute value of the absolute value and run it again, it's 10. So I can keep doing this over and over. And every time I pass in the result back into absolute uh, the absolute value again, no matter how many times you pass that value in, it's still going to give you 10 every time. And that's what idempotence means. So hopefully that kind of clears that up. And it doesn't have to be a function either. I mean, you can have a line in your code that is a equals 10 or something like that, just an assignment. And um, this is a line of code, so um, it can be executed. And no matter how many times you execute it in a row, a equals 10, a equals 10, a equals 10, run it over and over and over, every time it's going to do the exact same thing. So that's an idempotent statement also. So really the simple definition of idempotence is uh, that whenever you do something over and over and over and over and over and you do the same thing, uh, that you get the same result back every time and that you're not uh, building on top of that result. Now where you usually see this is in HTTP methods. Um, so a lot of these are considered idempotent. So a get HTTP method is considered idempotent. So because if you go to a URL and you're just getting the URL for this user, no matter how many times you reload this page and reload this page, it's going to give you the same result every time. It's not changing anything. Now put is considered idempotent also because put is usually used for uh, updating values. Uh, so say you update the same parameter to the same value every time. Uh, say you want to set um, you know, a user equal to Corey and then you submit that. If you submit the update to set user equals 
to uh, user equals Corey again and again and again, every time it's just going to set that user equal to Corey and it's not changing the value. So that's considered item potent as well. Now the method that's not considered item potent is post. Uh, so post is used for changing data in the background. So uh, say for example you have a website with a voting system and every time you go to a certain URL it casts a vote. So every time you go to that URL and it casts a vote and it casts a vote and it casts a vote, that's not item potent because every time you go to it, you're getting a different result back. It's either going to uh, vote up or down based on the URL that you're going to. Um, so every time you get back a different, different result. So by definition, post is not item potent. Now, lastly, delete is considered item potent. Uh, so th this one's a little bit confusing to some people because uh, you would think that if you deleted a user and then you tried to delete that user again, maybe you'll get a 404 because that user no longer exists. Uh, but you have to think about uh, the, the state of your server and the effect that it's having. Um, so say you delete user 123 here, uh, whenever you try to re-delete and re-delete and re-delete, it's already deleted that user, so you can run that multiple multiple times again and again and again, and it's not changing anything additionally on your server. So the state of your server is still the same no matter how many times uh, you call it in a row. Uh, so after the one time you call it, uh, every time after that gives the same result, so it is considered item potent. So I hope that makes that more clear. Um, just remember, uh, whenever you run a function or do an operation, um, after the first time, the value can change on the first time. Like, for example, absolute value of 10, it changes from negative 10 to 10. But if you keep passing it in and keep passing it in and pass your result in over and over and over, if you always get the same result, that's considered item potent. So anytime you hear somebody mention item potence or something like that, uh, you'll know what, you're, what they are talking about. So hopefully this uh, video is useful for you guys. Be sure to subscribe for future programming term videos. If you have any questions, just ask in the comment section below. And thank you for watching.